What's up, everybody? We're back with part two of Operation Dambreaker. Today, we're covering the strategies used on the Russian side of our clan fight. If you haven't checked out part one, I'd highly recommend it because I give some background on what this is and how it's set up. But I'd also recommend hitting the subscribe button. Please like the video and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I would really appreciate it. Now, the differences between part one and part two are that we're covering the Russian side. We're on the same map being Manakugan, and the layer is RAS 3. Our vehicle selection is going to be relatively similar to what we had on the U.S. Army side. Two IFVs, two T-72 tanks. We have helicopter. We have a BRDM, a few Tigers, a couple logistics vehicles, and a transport. If you watched part one, you know as the U.S. Army, we wanted to set up a middle lane push. We sent forces down the middle lane and try to make it so that if the Russians wanted to push across the river, they had to go north or south. And we wanted to force the Russian team to have to cross the river as much as possible, slowing them down and narrowing some of the paths that they could use. So on the flip side of this, playing as the Russian forces, we needed to do the opposite. We have to claim as much territory as we can and establish a presence on the eastern side of the North and South River. So here's how I broke it down. First of all, we were gonna have a helicopter with infantry on board, going to a small cluster of points in the middle lane. This was to sort of offset anything they could do in terms of a push that might match our US push towards Bay Como West. The idea here is that we might be in position for their third and fourth points. And the squad doing it is prepared to set up a FOB so that we can continue to hold this area if necessary. The next part of the plan is what my squad is involved with. We are gonna push two light vehicles into their back lines as quickly as possible. In doing so, we were going to pass probably three or so POIs, but ultimately we wanted to get to a spot called Cannabis Farm. That's often a second point in the U.S. Army's progression of objectives. By doing so, we hope to slow down their logistics and potentially figure out if they're moving north for a third point. Next up, we had two infantry squads moving with logistics vehicles to handle back cap and tandem with one another and potentially leapfrogging forward as we back capped all our points. Both our BMPs would work towards the middle bridges to help cover any sort of advance that may have passed through the middle of the map. So we're going to go ahead and dive into my POV. And right now we're passing Firebase Boris, the point we held on part one as the U.S. Army. And one thing I didn't realize as we're driving past Firebase Boris is that they had actually already done a helo drop here. So we are passing enemy infantry as we continue towards Cannabis. Now, one danger with this is that we could run into an enemy Bradley or some sort of light Vic that could light up our windshield and kill most of us. So we have to do this very quickly and efficiently. Yeah, guys, we got uh, armor on my movement, no, but I don't know what it is. No, it's sent on down. Understood. Okay. This is going to be kept now. Squad 1, do not block the bridge. We got it. Oh, what? Lumber. Yep. Okay. It's fall on the river. We're still in play here. So we could still go. Yeah, it's still play. Yeah, we're still in play. Do I see something ahead? Good three. If, you, yes, if you're going to remove ahead. mark, I'll handle the south potential flag. On my moon mark. Yeah, yeah. Infantry. Yeah. 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 So obviously we've ran into contact here at Cannabis Farm. It's likely that they're trying to cap the point or at least be here to stage in case the point does head this way. Now, because we didn't bring any logistics vehicles with us or helicopters not meeting us, it's really significant that we get a rally down. That allows us to do multiple pushes on this objective if necessary. We're going to go ahead and take the Tigers down for another run past Cannabis Farm. The rally is set up not too far, so it can support with response onto this objective. So much of what we do in this area is about speed and sort of having an internal clock running for how long we should actually spend here. Yeah, one on Charlie near the barrel. I think I might have saw it. Yeah, more, more to our Kilo close. Above. There's more to our close, close. There's AT. Uh, AT, Charlie, that's behind. Oh, I got a on me, Lodgy on me. Lodgy on me. Bradley over here, 
he's by move. I need a, I need a mark. Copy. Can we confirm both Bradleys here? I have radio. There's the... Radio, Charlie. Bradley. Charlie. Bradley, hit with 10. Okay, mark on one Bradley. It's on my turf, stationary. Bradley next to oh, wait, you're down there. Do not, do not. Yeah, uh, it's, it's north, it's here. north. And... Oh, it's Bradley's going east moving. down the road. East. Yeah, smoked out. Shooter, your radio. radio. Stationary Bradley is now moving tr on the yeah, tracks going on the west. Maybe copy stationary Bradley on 8 move. Right now, um, I'm waiting. Uh, he's now stationary on my uh, 8 move now. Nice. Oh my god, I'm just gonna try you. You're driving, so watch your way. Infantry west. I'm managing you, I got you, I got you. By one. Infantry west? Can you see that, Emery? Uh, no, but I have a stretch, I have a stretch. Sorry. Okay. Oh, what a grenade. Hope they didn't mark on Bradley. I got eyes on the half. You'll have to bandage it. It's, it's direct west of me yep. in the garden area, like the farm area. Uh, in the center Here? part. In the center, center road of the farm. Bradley destroyed. One Bradley destroyed. Nice job. Uh, it's a uh, piece of that mark. Bradley the one on the west, the one on the east. In between the two fields. Bradley near cannabis is destroyed. I'm jigging radio. Copy, copy, copy. Like I'm at the brown line running between the two green squares. Bradley is behind the building. Yeah, we're gonna get the victim. Nice. Where's the other Bradley? Yes, sorry. I was trying to pass on too much shit. You're fine. I have no uh, idea why. Okay. Bradley went way, uh, on the road. I'm inside their hab right now. I need to take it down there. No. Radio is down one layer. We're moving you down. down. On the uh, north of the Bradley Mark. They were uh, probably building a hub or repair station. Understood. This whole push became a little bit rough and communications were off. Our Tiger getting destroyed by the Bradley seemed to be a little bit of confusion between how many Bradleys were there. We thought one and then there were actually two Bradleys near Cannabis. So one had moved south or was coming up from the south that killed the tiger that I jumped out of before dying right behind the enemy Lodgy. But given that there's a Lodgy here, we had a strong suspicion that they might be building a HAB. Turns out the HAB is inside Cannabis, and the radio for that HAB is actually south side, where we initially ran into contact right near the Lodgy position. So on this one push, we were able to kill an enemy Bradley, an enemy radio, and a logistics vehicle, tallying up about 40 tickets right off the bat at the beginning of a round. Granted, we did lose a Tiger and some infantry lives along the way, I still think this push paid off. In addition to those tickets, we've also slowed down their progression overall. By killing the logistics vehicle, there's not going to be a respawn for another couple of minutes. Same goes for the Bradley. Now you don't have that armor support for your infantry at a cluster of points where you really need to get some support in. Now on the other side of the map, we've made a solid effort in getting into position near Bay Como West, which actually has paid off. It's apparent now that our fourth and fifth point are right near where we sent a helicopter to set up a fob early in the round. I go ahead and make the call that we need to start loading up and leaving this area because we're no longer really effective here. We've wiped out the enemy infantry. There doesn't seem to really be anything going on until two Abrams roll into the vicinity. Our hat is able to track one of the tanks, leaving it immobilized briefly. The other tank actually wraps around and kills our tiger. In the meantime, I have one of my squad members actually kill me, so I can respawn at a fob to try to put down an airstrike. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late because the tank was able to get mobilized again. After our tiger's destroyed and some of our infantry gets killed by the tank, I have them start respawning at the front lines. We're going to work on a southern flank and try to push into this compound where we know they have a repair station, most likely a hab. I go ahead and run the UAV in an effort to try to provide some helpful data and information for our vehicles as well as some of our infantry so that we can facilitate an attack on their HAB because we're not going to really be able to take the point because they have a pretty well defended position here in this compound. 
In this situation, I'm looking more so to prioritize taking out the HAB versus the objective. And as long as we have a defensive group up on Baycoma West, we should be able to spend our time working at this versus just running into the objective to get killed. Is Mark on the map already under the UAV mark? I think you can see it. Um, tow audio by rally? Possible Bradley? I think that Bradley's turreted. Coming to the He is, he is. Uh, Blueberry put a C4 charge. Bradley down. Bradley yeah, down in south here. 10-4, I'll see if I can see anything with uh, UAV. One might look at me. I can grab it when I go down next. Sounds good. C4 just went off, so. I think he killed a Vic. C can we get a rep station on uh, one of these hubs, please? Enemy heli chasing our friendly heli. Uh, three, we're down to uh, four, we're down to half. Can we get a fob creation on that hab? Okay. Oh, Thank you, Squid Bob Grace is down, but I'm assuming it's going to be in the compound. Squad 5 4, what are you chasing? I'll be taking We're not. We're also being yeah, an engineer to repair. Through Bravo here, so. He's inside now. Stretch Outlaw, check move mark north of you and see if you see anything real quick before you cross south. Roger that. Hound, what do you see from there? Uh, everything's up to you right now. Okay. So there's an important thing happening here. From a command perspective, one thing I try to avoid at all times is the white line. The I line connecting two different objectives because you tend to run into the most resistance because folks are going to use that white line as they walk from one point to another because it's the shortest route. So it's an indication of where to expect enemy forces, at least typically. I normally won't place a HAB or any sort of FOB setup in between objectives near that white line because typically in like a public match, you're gonna run into blueberries just walking from point to point. So to keep the FOB more secure, I try to set up in a position off of the white line around an objective. Now we are in pretty good position here to make an attack. However, because they're basically operating out of a compound that has high walls and plenty of coverage, there's not a lot we can do besides putting infantry around and trying to get behind them because most of their infantry is moving directly into the objective to help cover it. We do have moments where we start to get a cap on the objective. However, they push us off and that's because they have a hab right there. So normally in a public server, I might be looking to set up another fob somewhere to the southeast of where their hab is to counter their position and to provide more infantry with a flanking position onto their objective and the hab that they have set up. Again, prioritizing their hab to take down that so that they have no way to actually support the objective itself. But because they have a couple of Abrams roaming the area, it's a little bit tough to bring in a helicopter or bring another logistics vehicle all the way from Maine right at the moment. However, if this continued to play out, it would be a requirement for us to figure out how to get logistics support down here to set up some sort of flanking position. Tank shifted uh, south. It's moving around. Largely, the round turned into a little bit of a stalemate around this objective and the hab that they had close to it, sort of in their compound, which is, again, pretty well defended just by walls and structures. So it's really tough to break in unless you just have an overwhelming presence. And we were finally able to slow down their spawning 
and make it very difficult for them to actually push us off the objective. They did send a Lodgy on the south side to try to get behind us. However, I think this is a little bit too late. And thankfully, my guys plus the helicopter were able to spot it, track it, and actually push it before they could do much of anything. However, they did get a radio down, so that was another 20 tickets. One thing that sometimes isn't used as well, especially in public matches, is the ability for helicopters to basically become UAVs. Having them spot armor or just logistic movements or anything like that is so significant for intel. Because the commander only has a UAV every so often, you don't get that bird's eye view all the time. But because you might have one to two helicopters in the sky, you could potentially get a really, really good amount of information from the pilot if they're able to just look around and keep tabs on certain things happening. Because squad relies so heavily on communication, it's obvious that intel becomes really significant. The more intel a team has, the more they can do to prepare or counter an attack, potentially find certain vehicles and apply pressure to objectives. There's so many things that you can do. So having this in this moment, knowing that, hey, we've got a Lodgy sneaking around behind us, I can go ahead and assign infantry to push that. Because if they set up a FOB and get the HAB down, they could have people spawning there really quickly, making it more difficult for us to make that push and potentially offsetting our hold on this area. So speed is pretty important here. Squad one killed Lodgy. Our transport got to get out over there. One killed Lodgy. Squad one was shooting far south and killed the vehicle. Yeah, Hilo says he spotted our radio. Come That might be our guy. I'm gonna delete a uh, fob creation on point. Last news on tank. Visual on hab. Hab is on my observe. As Bearing well. uh, west of me, maybe 100 meters. Got it. Yep. Good work. Far out. I'll move to support. No sign of infantry, they might already be on the way. So obviously we have capped the objective that we were all fighting over, and now we've revealed their next objective. So we can actually start applying pressure here. Thankfully I still have my rally there, so I send one guy before they actually burn the rally, uh, just to at least get eyes on the position. We already have some infantry getting ready to move to that position relatively quickly, because again, we do have speed as our advantage. Now, I know that at this point that we have the enemy team sort of on their back foot. There's not going to be a lot that they can do, but unfortunately, we found that there were some things going on in the other team, which caused some folks to leave. So this actually pretty much ended the round. Within a few minutes, we had enough guys on Cannabis Farm to start capping, and the enemy was pretty much calling just to surrender the round. So let's go over a little bit about my thoughts in terms of how the round operated. So first and foremost, the team worked very well together, much like we did in the first round. Everyone sort of followed the objectives and the goals and the strategy that was set forth to begin with. While this wasn't some sort of over ambitious plan, it did call for folks to at least operate together as a unit. For example, if I send nine infantry guys on a rush attack, we are basically in a position of, hey, we could either do really well or really bad. It's not necessarily going to be the perfect scenario, but we happen to run into the perfect scenario. But on the flip side of that, had another squad not gone and set up Acoma West Habs and slowed down the enemy push, we could have been a real setback in terms of our ability to make any sort of attack beyond the first couple of objectives. So we took some risks here in terms of placement, and it worked out. I mean, Bay Coma West could have got wiped out and overwhelmed, whereas our push on Cannabis Farm could have been deflected. But in fact, they weren't, and we were able to do what we needed to do to slow down logistics and cause enough problems on the back line that Bay Coma West could get set up and start applying an attack really before they got quite settled. Now, obviously, in public matches, you don't always get this sort of coordination and teamwork, so it's really fun to be able to try tactics and do some things that we've played around with in public matches, but across the board, right? Every squad sort of has some sort of purpose or focus and, and see how that execution plays out. And obviously we didn't get to finish this round, you know, wipe out the enemy team's tickets, but we did get far enough. And you'll see here on the ticket differential at the end of the screen, how much that difference was. And I think you'll be pretty understanding of the fact that we were pushing them basically to the brink. I mean, we already had cannabis farm. They had one objective left. And here in the Gila, we were already making a push for that next objective. So I think a lot of this round boiled down to speed, taking a couple risks and trying to disrupt their ability to get a good fortified position close to the river. On the US Army side, you'll see some differences in the strategy where we tried to push a little bit further, but we held more of a defensive position to keep them from being able to cross the river. So there's some interesting dynamics here and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video because I certainly had a good time putting this together and cutting it down and doing this voiceover. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below with your thoughts and I will see you all next time.
Discord and submit tickets for feedback, please, for future games. It's kind of crummy that another clip.